All right, so Halloween is coming, and for Halloween, um, it's time to get really inspired by the different kind of elements that we might see, such as jack-o'-lanterns, black cats, ghosts, uh, and kind of really take those kind of ideas and turn them into a drawing that we can use either as a decoration for Halloween or just to use as something fun to do um, upon um, Halloween entering our world. All right, so today we're gonna to take a look at drawing both a jack-o'-lantern with a little cat, um, and then you can always edit or change things as you see fit. So what I always like to say is, um, I am going to do it in my style of drawing, but as the artist, you have the power to change things as you see it. So if you wanna change the way I do my eyes or my mouth or my jack-o'-lantern or just even the style of the cat, at any time, feel free as the artist to do your own version of my drawing. Okay, so this is an idea. You can roll with it, you can try it one time, and then the second time you can even stylize it in different ways. I'm gonna do a um, oil pastel and paint version um, with some marker, but if you want to experiment with other mediums and materials, such as replacing the oil pastels with crayons if you don't have them, and using no paint or trying something completely different, even adding some collage elements, feel free to experiment and get creative because that's gonna help you as an emerging artist. Um, figure out how materials and mediums work together and the possibilities that they allow you or don't allow you. All right, so let's get started. We're gonna begin with drawing the top of our pumpkin, so of the stem, sorry. So we're gonna just take a look at just drawing some zigzag lines. Because when we cut off a vine on a pumpkin, they're not perfectly round. Typically, it grows in different ways, and as it gets bigger and bigger, it starts to distort and have different ridges and varieties. And plus, we want it to look a little bit spooky. So the, the more crooked it is, the spookier it becomes. If you want it to be cute, make it more smooth. So from there, I'm gonna, from each of these corners, I'm actually going to draw some curved lines. In just different ways. And these are going to be parts of my pumpkin. Now, if you ever make mistakes, feel free to just figure out a solution for editing them. Now, I highly suggest that you do pencil first, but for this drawing and for this video, I'm gonna be doing a permanent marker right from the beginning because it's a lot easier for you to see what I'm doing. All right, so from each of these points, we're just gonna curve, draw some curved lines inward. and that will kind of create a spooky sort of stem. Now it's um, time to draw sort of the pumpkin's body shape. We're gonna draw a oval for the first part, and then from each of these kind of points, we're gonna draw more curving lines that kind of fold in at the bottom. And then of course, we might not see some of the curve or stem points in the back, so we're just going to add some layers in the back and then just tuck it in. We're not gonna be able to see everything because of course we're only viewing it from this side of the pumpkin, we're not behind it. So we can't see it, we can't draw it. It just doesn't work. Now to make it extra spooky, I highly suggest that you add different sorts of little dash lines or curving swirling lines in the top of the pumpkin stem and that's just gonna add a layer of detail. And you can also add them short, long, thin, whatever. The more variety, the more interesting that you create your piece. And any of the folds in behind, you can even add some hatching lines in there. And that's just going to add some shading. Anywhere you see fit, you can add some hatching lines. And now that level of detail in the stem really draws your eye to it because we really want this pumpkin to be the focal point of our piece. Um, and then we'll have the background not as detailed because we really wanna draw our viewer's eye or our audience to the pumpkin first, okay? So we're gonna do pumpkin in the foreground, our cat's gonna be in the middle ground area, and our background's gonna be more abstract because that's not what we want our viewer to be looking at. We want them to be looking specifically at the pumpkin in front of us. All right, so now that we have some of the details on the pumpkin, we can draw our pumpkin's face. Now I'm just gonna do a basic jack-o'-lantern, my sort of favorite jack-o'-lantern style, and this is honestly how I like to carve them too. 
I love pumpkins and but sometimes and I love making sculptures in my own world but for me sometimes I don't want to always carve them the same way as I like to make other things detailed I have a go-to pumpkin face and this is it I like two eyes I leave a little line white line there because that's gonna be like the glowing part or the edge of the pumpkin that you can see carved into it um, and we'll make that like the a lighter version <clears throat> And we're going to add a nose. And for me, this is my go-to smile. All right. Now, once you have your preferred pumpkin jack-o'-lantern carving, then you can add the cat. So next, we're going to be drawing a cat in the middle ground. So I'm going to start off with drawing some curving zigzag lines that kind of all form up toward a point. And from there, I'm going to draw two cat ears and I'm going to run a little line in between them to kind of uh, add the folds of the ears. And then I'm going to form the, tree, the cheeks with more zigzag lines coming to a point on one side and the same over here. As you notice, I brought that ear too, too far down, so we're just going to fix it by adding some shading on both sides. Symmetry can kind of mask up some things. Awesome. Once we have the cat's face, we're going to draw two arches and two eyes. We're going to draw two white spots in the eyes for the glare of the light and behind it a circle. For the pupil. I'm trying to make it uh, the same on both sides. For the nose, I always draw a cat nose like a bubble letter T, but you can do it like an upside down triangle, whatever makes sense for you. We're going to add two cheeks, just like that, with little teeth on the bottom. Now my, obviously we're not going to be able to see that my cat's other little tooth and that's okay. I'm going to add some zigzag lines for the side of his body. I'm going to draw a line for his leg. And I always draw toes with the letter C. So if you look at it, it's just a letter C. And if you can draw a letter C, then you can draw some toes for your cat. And zigzag lines, again, for the back of the leg. Now, as you can tell, a lot of making a drawing is just made up of lines. Sometimes they're zigzags, sometimes they're curves. Everything here is just done with simple lines and simple shapes. Now, we're going to have my cat's tail kind of come up, and he has a bushier tail for a cat, so part of it is quite bushy. Now, on this side, we can always add a friendly little ghost. I have a lot of white space here, and if I left it with nothing there, there would be, it'd be kind of, well, off-centered. There'd be no balance to my paper. It'd be awkward having the space there, so we may as well add a friendly little ghost over here. So we're going to start off with two ghost eyes. Add our pupil, our white spot for the glare of light, and then color in our pupil. Next a nose with a little happy face. I'm going to have his mouth open because he's a ghost. We draw a letter M for that tongue and then just simply color in the back of the mouth. On the corners of the mouth, we draw a letter V, and now we're ready to draw his head. We're gonna start off with a wavy shape that kind of curves in a couple times, just like that. And bring his head down. Ghosts are wispy sort of creatures, so we don't need to worry about what specific shape it is or if it's the same on either side. There is no right or wrong way to draw a ghost. Um, we're going to go with the theory that nobody has seen a ghost. Of course, we don't know if that's true, and there's always those claims. And I'm not going to be the one to decide whether somebody is right or wrong, so we're just going to go with the fact that I haven't personally seen a ghost. Maybe you have. You might want to draw something, uh, maybe draw it 
differently, but this is how I'm going to draw my ghost. And of course, ghosts have very wispy tails. So we're gonna have a little wispy tail along the bottom. I'm also going to add some details of line and wisps within my ghost to kind of add to that element and to draw some more details to his body, just like that. I notice on my picture that I have the nice characters in my in my image, but I am missing the both the bottom, so the ground the ba um, and the background. There's not much going on. So now we're going to take a look at adding some detail to that. And through that, we're going to be using, well, I'm going to be using some oil pastel. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a green oil pastel, and I'm going to simply add some lines along the bottom to add some detail and to add color for the grass. And all I'm doing is just adding little chunks of hatching lines everywhere. I'm gonna do a back, sorry, a black background. So I'm gonna use a white pastel. And because it's night, I'm gonna add swirls and dots with uh, white pastel. So sometimes it might be a swirl and you can't really see what I'm doing, but you will see it a little bit later. But I can also add dots for the stars. So just drawing little dots. Okay, again, you can't see this now, but they will show up a little bit later. I'm going to color part of my pumpkin and outline parts of it with a pastel, but some of it I'm going to actually just leave blank because I'm going to add some paint in the inside of it. So outlining parts of it, and this is also going to keep the background out um, from bleeding into it because I'm going to paint the background. I want to have a little bit of a barrier with this pastel because the oil pastel is actually going to create a resist effect um, and it's going to prevent the paint from penetrating um, for the most part into my picture. Okay, so I'm just going to add some detail just like this to my pumpkin. I'm not being super neat about it, I realize that but I think it'll add character and it's gonna blend out. But if you want it to be smoother, you can simply just take your finger and just smooth out your lines. Pastel is kind of a really interesting material in that it kind of acts like paint sometimes, the way it moves and around with your fingers. It's quite uh, beautiful that way. Um, I'm gonna uh, color just the outline of my stem with brown as I'm going to paint the inside to make it a little bit more interesting and add some variety. So I don't want to add too much detail. Plus the pastel is a little bit strong and it hides some of my lovely details that I drew with my marker. So I don't really want to cover that up. As well, I'm going to outline just the um, exterior of my cat. I do want to paint him in, so I don't want to do too much with this pastel. And 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 the thing is, is that um, the black pastel is very opaque and it covers up all details. <laughs> so I want to be very careful about how I use it and where I use it. So I'm just going to do the outlines only along the exterior. It'll make my cat stand out a little bit more, but it's not going to um, cover up the inside. I don't particularly want to do any of the face details with this pastel because it will... This is a very big edge. It's not like using my marker, so I'm not going to use it there. Okay, so that's where I'm going to leave my cat. The one thing I am going to do, however, is I'm going to color that cat's little nose because that's a very difficult place to paint as well. I'm going to take my white pastel and I'm going to color just the whites of the eyes because I, if I get paint on there, it's going to stay a color instead of staying white. And I'm going to do that tooth as well because I want that tooth to remain white. On to the ghost. I'm going to color the entire ghost with white. If you have that happen, where your color transfers on, no worries, I just take my fingernail and I kind of just scratch it out. It's no big deal. And anyway, once this is all said and done, nobody's going to notice it that much. Life is not just a color. So adding multiple colors to something is just gonna add realism. 
because nothing in this world is white. I mean, for instance, this eraser is white, but not really. If you look close, you start seeing how dirty it is and whatever. And plus, where the way shadows and colors reflect and move upon each other, um, it, nothing stays the same. It's not, nothing's a solid color in this world. A pumpkin's not just orange. When you start looking closely, there are many colors in a pumpkin. Now, I do enjoy that the white is making this, these black marks look more faded. It does add a little bit more realism. Color your little tongue with red, and now we are most likely ready to start painting. Oh, except for the fact that I totally forgot about the glowing <laughs> pumpkin eyes. If you have a color that is dirty, such as this one, so if you look closely, um, there's, you can see that I've used this in other projects. Uh, the way I clean oil pastels is just by simply, I just rotate them in my hand. If you have colors that are light and you don't want these colors to transfer, I just simply do that because my hand is a washable, so. It cleans it up for the most part. All right, lovely. He's lit and ready to go. Next, we're gonna take our water. Okay, and I got my paints ready. For this, I am using my lovely oil, pa I'm sorry, <laughs> my lovely watercolor paints. Um, the cool thing about the two watercolor paints is that when they dry, they are hard in your palette, but as soon as you apply water to them, then they're useful. And this way there is no waste. So I can just, once this dries, you can see I'm pressing on it quite firmly. It's dry and hard, but I can just, after it dries, put it back in a drawer and it's good to go. Pull it out and I have paints ready to go. And these paints have been on here obviously for a while. I use them often and I hardly refill it. They just go forever. It's amazing. It's my fave. So I highly recommend that you use um, watercolor paints or just keep them around. And it's so easy to clean up and wash. And so especially if you're at home, it's an easy way to have explore paints without having a lot of mess. And if you're a teacher, I highly recommend you use these for your, your classroom. So if you are using paints, you dip your water into the water, you're sorry, your brush into the water, and then you just have to swirl a few times. That is all that is needed to get paint on your paintbrush. You don't need to scrub firmly. It's just gentle, 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 done. All right, so I know sometimes that we get so excited with our art pieces that we simply begin to scrub the paint, but all we're doing is ruining our bristles and just, just dissolving that paint into nothingness. And once you've done that, you are ready to go. And I like the watercolor paints because you can have dark colors with a lot of paint and less um, water or you can just let it go and have let your paintbrush um, continue across the page and then have a, little, a lot of variety in the, in the intensity of the color. Um, for lighter values of the color, you have more water and less paint and that will make it lighter. So it gives you a lot of flexibility. I'm just gonna paint over my pumpkin and then he's ready to go. Cat, I'm going to paint black because because it's Halloween. And so for me, that's why I'm doing the black cat today. And as you can see already, this pastel is completely resisting the paint. So it makes it a very impermeable surface. And as you can see, that white pastel is not being lost. Um, sorry, that white tooth is not being lost because of the white pastel. Now, 
now we're going to take a look at doing the ground. So we're switching it to green paint. And this is where some of those green lines will stand up. And as you can see along the edges of this ghost that the ghost is not becoming green. I'm trying not to get the paint on there so I don't have to wipe it off, but uh, it's not going to permeate as it, uh, as, you would it as it would, sorry, if you hadn't done the pastel. Finally, we want to do the background, and for this background, I am going to just do a black background, but I might add some blues and purples on top of it later. But as I paint, you're going to notice that all those white pieces begin to magically show up, and I find that's like the coolest thing, is that all these little white guys magically appear. It's very, it's especially fun to watch it happen. Very relaxing. The other thing about watercolor paints that I like is that you don't have to be consistent with the values that you add. So you can have dark areas of paint that are dark and areas of paint that are light. And I think that adds to the beauty of the piece. Now I know that the ghost and the cat are not as um, apparent or forthcoming as this pumpkin and that is Part of the magic is that the pumpkin is the thing that you're going to look at first if you're viewing this art piece. It is a focal point still. Then we start beginning to notice other details such as a ghost to the to the right and then we have your cat as well. You can stop here but if you would like to add or um, some variety in your background in your sky you can uh, try experimenting with adding some blue on top of your art piece just as so. Or you can add purple and see what happens. Just adding dots here or there and letting the paint blend it by itself. And when you're satisfied, you can set your art piece to the side to dry and your art piece is now complete. For more Artastic tutorials, please visit my blog at MsArtastic.com or check out my TPT store where you can find almost 500 art tutorials or art projects or art resources for art teachers. And you can head on over to TeachersPayTeachers.com and search MsArtastic in the search bar and you'll be able to find my store. As well for um, teacher apparel and teacher t-shirts, you can find my store, um, MsArtastic Collection. Um, you can find that link in my um, in the comment section below the video or you can head on over to my blog and click the little button that will take you there as well there's lots of great t-shirts that you can totally wear um, to wear to work in your classroom both for art teachers and for uh, general teachers as well for please make sure that you subscribe to this uh, YouTube channel for to get all the different updates um, for this for new art projects and resources and tips for our teachers that are coming out um, as well Please click the notification button and like this video. Have yourself an artastic day.